Hello, welcome to this seminar on streaming. I'm Andy Pidsley of API Communications. We're a specialist church audio-visual designer installer, which of course includes cameras and streaming systems as well as sound and projection systems. And now also includes acoustic assessment and treatment of buildings to tame unwanted reverberation. Let's start with some basics. What is streaming? Fundamentally, it's turning a video signal from a camera or other device into a format that can be carried by the internet in a reliable manner. For most data, the timing is not critical, but with video and audio, we expect to have a continuous, uninterrupted stream of sound and pictures presented to us as if we were watching a TV program. So streamed content has to be prepared and packaged in a priority wrapper to give it the best chance of not being inter uninterrupted by other less critical forms of data, such as email and web browsing. So when is streaming not streaming, but conferencing? Traditionally, streaming is a one-way, one-to-many form of communication like a TV broadcast with little or no feedback. For example, YouTube, where you can watch live or pre-recorded content, but only the interaction is based on a text-based comment system. With conferencing, such as Zoom or Microsoft Teams, you have a host and several participants, so it's much more akin to a traditional form of meeting where everybody can join in, and the chairperson just takes control of who can speak at any one time. So with either system, the content can be broadly the same as far as the internet is concerned, but the equipment might be slightly different in each case, so you need to consider whether you're going down a more broadly conferencing type system with Zoom or Microsoft Teams, or whether you're purely streaming and uh, not expecting a lot of feedback, but it's more of a presentation rather than an interactive program. For example, you can stream with a dedicated streaming unit without a computer, um, but for Zoom and Microsoft Teams, you need a computer or another smart device to run their software. So this brings us on to hardware. What do you need? Well, every streaming system has these fundamental components. You need a camera. So this is a typical camera that we would use in one of our systems. It has a remote pan and tilt and zoom function. Uh, it can be mounted upside down from a ceiling or a balcony. Um, you might use a camera more like this, which is a traditional digital SLR camera. Uh, it might be the camera on your phone. Um, you also need a microphone. So this morning I'm talking through this microphone here, which is a small wireless device connected directly to my phone, which I'm filming on currently. Um, you also need something called a streaming server. Now this may be a physical object or it might be a bit of software on a laptop or other computer. So for example, a streaming server might look like this black box, which just has a couple of buttons on it to start and stop streaming. Very simple to operate. You don't need to know anything about computers or IT. It might be a slightly more complex device like this one, which includes vision switching. So you can switch between several cameras and you can also stream directly from this without having to have a separate PC. But it might just be a laptop or another computer with a capture device, which allows you to turn the video signal from a camera into a USB format signal which then goes into the computer and is streamed from there using streaming software. So when we think of the uh, streaming side of things, uh, streaming involves a server, which is either a piece of software, as, as I've said, or it's a piece of hardware that does that for you. Uh, and you think of this as a sort of wrapper that encapsulates your content into something that can be sent over the internet directly or by a hosting service or platform um, so you have to have some sort of device or software to turn your content into something that can be streamed. Uh, the next thing you need is a broadband connection, of course. Uh, we recommend a connection with a minimum of about six megabits upload speed. Um, so if you have twice that, you've probably got a guarantee of good performance. Mostly we think of internet as far as download speeds, um, what is what most people are obsessed with. Um, but for our purposes, we're actually sending something out rather than bringing it in. 
Um, so you need to check what your upload speed is. The easiest way to do that is with one of the many online speed checkers. What I would say is that it's worth trying several of these uh, and just averaging the results because some of them are wildly inaccurate. Uh, for example, I used the Witch speed checker to check my outgoing speed a little while ago. And I also compared it with the Ookla speed test and they were very, very different indeed. The Ookla one I think I trust because I know what our guaranteed upload speed is from our office here as we're on a business quality connection. So what if you don't have broadband connection to your church or building? There are several ways to uh, get around this. Obviously you can have uh, somebody come in and quote for installing broadband into the church. That has got to be the sort of gold standard because uh, with streaming it's recommended that you have a wired connection from your streaming device straight into your router and then from there you obviously have a wired connection out into the wider internet world. Uh, that is the most reliable system you'll probably get. Um, just one notch down from that, that these days is the 4G uh, system. So you can use a, uh, a phone tethered to 4G, um, but preferably using a 4G router. This is like your domestic router, but it has a SIM card slot in it in which you install a 4G SIM card. And as long as you've got good 4G reception at your church premises, then you should be able to stream as reliably as having a domestic broadband installed. Um, if you find that you have a good signal outside the church, but not so good signal inside the church, there are ways and means of having external aerials that can be discreetly mounted to give you a good signal inside the church. And we can do a sort of survey to discover whether different providers will uh, work properly at your church. Uh, the last resort probably is to uh, do one of two things. You can uh, see if there's a neighbour who is prepared to lend you their broadband for your services, which would, in a, which would uh, encompass having to have some sort of either wired link to their house or a wireless link from the church to the house. Or if you maybe have a church office that is uh, separate from the church, that it has a broadband connection already, but you don't have broadband in the church itself, um, there are various ways in which we can put in a uh, either a, a wired connection into the church or we have some very fast uh, wireless point-to-point -point connections uh, that we can use to bring broadband in from a distance of several hundred meters if necessary. And finally, uh, you're going to need a streaming or hosting platform. Um, most of us are familiar with YouTube uh, and obviously now there is Facebook Live as well. Um, the platform is essentially the carrier uh, on the internet that transmits your stream to many people. Uh, currently, you would be streaming to them and then they would be dispersing that uh, information out to many. Um, it's very expensive, generally speaking, to have your own uh, online distribution uh, because of the amount of bandwidth required. So these days, uh, most people use the free services such as YouTube or Facebook to go live. And obviously as, as uh, domestic customers, we are familiar with using those uh, and your congregation are gonna be familiar with using those services too. Um, those are free, obviously, um, and which is fine. You can use paid for services if you want to do more clever things like embed your uh, feed into your website, you might have to use a paid for service to do that with a monthly cost. If you're using Zoom or Microsoft Teams, um, you will get uh, Microsoft Teams comes uh, included in the Microsoft Office uh, 365 bundle. So if you're already using that as a church, then you've got that facility already. Uh, Zoom typically for uh, the package that suits most churches uh, is £11.99 a month. Um, so those are the conferencing packages. Uh, with uh, YouTube and Facebook, you also need another little piece of software, which is your sort of streaming server software that turns your video signal into the stream for Facebook or YouTube. And there are several of those. One of the most popular ones is uh, StreamYard. Um, it allows you to also do some other clever things like put some logos and other information on the screen at the same time and insert your song words maybe as well. 
Uh, and, and then the other one that's very popular with churches is, is OBS Studio. And that's essentially a free service, but a little bit more complicated to set up than YouTube, than um, StreamYard or some of the other ones are. Um, just to show you some other products, when we're using the uh, pan tilt zoom camera that I showed you earlier on this one, uh, generally speaking, that's controlled with a controller a bit like this one. So you have a joystick control for up, down, left and right. You twist the knob for in and out. Once you've set the position of a camera, you can record it on these buttons here and then recall that preset in an instant. So you don't have to need to know how to do all of this. You can just have a little list of presets, put a number in, press enter, and the camera will automatically move to that position in the church. So I expect you may be doing something already. Um, and we, we like to think of the options moving forward uh, with all, everything I've talked about already on sort of four levels. So the entry level would be uh, using your tablet or smartphone, which you may already be doing. Um, these are handy devices in that they wrap all of the functions of the other pieces of equipment that I've talked about into a handy single wrapper. So if you want something that's utterly simple to use, then a smartphone is the way to go, at least to start with, as long as you can put up with the restrictions on um, the lens and other aspects of it. Um, the, the most important thing with using a smartphone is to, to get decent audio. So, for example, I have on my smartphone a little plug-in radio microphone receiver, again, as I said earlier, to this microphone on my chest here. So uh, I'm not picking up much of the room noise I'm in, so it's very easy to, for people to hear what I'm saying rather than being in a, in a very reverberant church with the camera, maybe the phone, maybe a couple of meters away where you're hearing a lot of that rim noise, which particularly for older people makes it difficult to hear the, the word. Uh, the level two solution would be uh, using a laptop with an integrated webcam and a separate microphone, ideally. Um, again, use a separate microphone so because your, your laptop may be a meter or so away from you, so it's gonna pick up uh, the sound of the room too much if you're just using that onboard camera. And also with laptops, the, the position of the camera is never particularly ideal. You, you tend to get a, a shot looking up your nose rather. Um, and also having a very wide angle lens means that you're very limited in where you can place the laptop. You've got no adjustment for zoom on there. Um, level three is when we start to look at more installed systems. So you might have a laptop or with a video capture device attached to it with one or more remote cameras. You might have uh, a digital SLR as one of your cameras or your main camera on a tripod going into your laptop. You might have ideally the feed from your existing sound system going into it. Um, you, you've probably got a sound system in your church already. You're familiar with how it works. So why not use all of that technology to give you good sound through your streaming? So uh, we can arrange to uh, fit a uh, uh, an extension lead from the output of your uh, sound system mixer into your uh, streaming system, your, even into your phone if necessary. Uh, and there are various wireless options to do that as well if you don't want to run cables. Um, and then laptop at level four is where you have um, a comprehensive streaming system that where you might have a running on a laptop or it might be running on one of these uh, switches like this, which has the streaming built into it. Um, that's where you might have uh, more cameras. You might have typically in our installations, we often put in at least one pan tilt zoom camera, but also another fixed lens camera, which is usually a cheaper option, which allows you just to cut away to a different shot. Because as you might have noticed from my talk here, everything I've been saying, you've been looking at me through a single camera angle. Now that doesn't create the most interesting program content. So if you can have another camera coming from a different angle, it makes it a lot more interesting for the viewer, uh, especially when you consider if we're sitting in church, our eyes are dotting around, we're looking around, we have the whole picture of what's happening in front of us. But when you're watching remotely, you only have just whatever the camera decides to show you. So. Having a second camera, even if it's just a fixed second camera, is great. It means that you can move the first camera to a different position. And while you're doing that, you can have a cutaway shot from the other camera. So then you can bounce back to the original camera so you don't see the camera move. Um, it just gives a much more slick presentation, basically. Um, 
and you can even have a, a portable camera as the as the other camera if you want to. Um, some of our systems we put in four cameras, so we maybe have two remote pan tilt zoom cameras. Uh, a fixed camera looking back at the congregation so we can have a brief shot of the congregation just to show there are people in the room which again is helpful to convey the message that you're taking part in something with other people as well and then that fixed camera showing the wide angle view at the front as well so uh, I'd like to conclude with some some streaming top tips here so uh, about the environment the environment needs to be somewhere quiet because most of the information in our in our services is conveyed by speech so we need to be able to hear that clearly so background noise can be distracting at best and reduce intelligibility particularly with those with less than perfect hearing so make a test recording listen back through the headphones how much of the room are you hearing rather than the person if you're recording in church maybe speaking more softly with the microphone closer to you might be better because you might stir up less of the reverberation in the room by doing that. If you're recording at home, try hanging a spare duvet up out of sight of the camera. This can reduce the sort of boxy sound that you get from small spaces. In this particular room, you can see behind me, we've got some sound deadening panels, uh, the ones we use in our, our acoustic treatment in the room. Um, so that helps with the sound, gives you a more neutral sound. So finally, some golden rules. Make sure you've got enough bandwidth because if you're running close to your bandwidth limit whenever you're transmitting, you're always going to be uh, liable to your stream dropping out. Many of our systems include recording, so if you do lose the stream, you can always post the recording later on in the day up online. I would say that uh, keep it as simple as possible, your system. If, you're, uh, if you can only really manage to use a smartphone, do it that way and do it well. Um, if you are going in for a more complex system, make sure that you get something that uh, you can handle as an operator that doesn't is not too complicated. Uh, we spend a lot of time in our systems trying to uh, meet the needs of our clients, but also give them give it to them in a way that there is democracy of operation. So more than one person, you don't have to be the expert to operate it. With a little bit of instruction, most people could use the system. That's what we're aiming for. Um, always do a test recording and listen back before you do a transmission because remember audio is king keeping good audio is more important than pin sharp pictures so avoid those reverberant spaces if you can if you can't which obviously some of most of you can't keep close to your microphone and you're going to pick up less of that room noise so moving forward you can contact me andy pidsley via email i'm on info at api communications .co.uk. I'd be very happy to chat to you more about this. Um, take a look at our YouTube channel, API Communications Limited. We have some excellent walkthrough video presentations of some of our previous system installations. Have a look at Wesley's Chapel in London, their, their YouTube channel. We did an installation for them some four years ago now, uh, before streaming became such a big thing. Have a look at the quality of the images on there. Bear in mind that their lighting is not great at all. I think it looks great, the fantastic quality of the audio there as well. But most of all, I hope this seminar has inspired you, been useful to you, and I hope to hear from you soon. Nothing beats sitting on it. Hearing it. Tasting it. Wearing it. Handling it. Trying it. Comparing it. The copier produces a thousand copies for four pounds. The RISO digital printer produces a thousand copies for one pound twenty at 140 pages per minute. Discussing it. The interesting thing about this centre is a very difficult breed on a very small site. Buying it. Recommending it. I definitely recommend it. It's always good to have resources and yeah, this is very resourceful, so it's a great place to be. Nothing beats being here. Buy your tickets online now. CREonline.co.uk forward slash tickets.